Apocalypse. Miles Grip Tape, new Grip Tape company. It's perforated. I like that. Um, it's $10. Eh, kind of pricey, I guess, you know, in a world that doesn't seem like there's much to be improved in, in terms of the actual Grip Tape. Their gimmick is they add what looks like a red razor blade, um, which that's great. $10 comes with a razor blade. Great idea. Uh, maybe I'll buy some Miles Grip Tape because I've been using the same razor blade for like nine months. It's like a complete piece of shit. The small caveat to this red razor blade is that it is plastic. What's the point of this? Is this gonna actually cut your grip tape? I like, I can't really imagine that, that this would do it. They describe it as a free plastic emergency blade. And what sort of emergency would a plastic razor blade be useful? Somebody walks up behind you in a dark alley Give me all your money. You turn around and whip out your, your Miles Grip emergency blade. I hope they're not referring to actually gripping your skateboard in a snag um, because I can't imagine a, a plastic razor blade doing anything uh, to grip tape. It's already difficult enough for most people to, to use a real blade, let alone a plastic one. Um, but if this actually works, I take it all back. Ooh, I've been sitting on this one, boys. I've been sitting. And ladies, Steve Barra calls gifted hater trash. Finally, daddy noticed me at last. The backstory to this is I think uh, some of my viewers here, some of my, my loyal fans, I love you boys, they met Steve Barnacle at a uh, skateboarding event. Steve is posted up in a dashing fit. Let, let me see if I can get a better uh, angle of this. Mm, I, dude, Steve is is dripping. Drip or drown, Steve is, is, his head is far above water. He's got on those like Italian running shoes. They're pretty nice. He's got the athletic shorts on. The, what are those, like Lululemon or something? Those look pretty nice. And then a black long sleeve and some sunglasses. You know, this is a nice, nice fit. I'd like to see Steve on one of those shows, how much your fit costs. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Ah! This could secretly be like a, a $2,000 fit. You know, when they would like, people would look at uh, like Mark Zuckerberg or whatever and be like, see, this is true wisdom. Mark Zuckerberg only wears Target clothes. He's like wearing like a blank t-shirt and some shorts or something. Actually, I, I, I Google searched for all of this stuff and his outfit is thousand dollars for some reason, even though it's indistinguishable from, from a Ross fit. That's what Steve's got on. He's got like the, the secret $2,000 outfit with this. What, what is this thing exactly? Over the shoulder front facing fanny pack? This very, very European. Look at this distinguished gentleman. A sophisticated man like this, I've gotta hear what he has to say. Wait, who? Who? Gifted hater? Come on, said you got yeah. this. How'd you not do it like that? You were saying Sean Pablo has the worst style. Too. Really? I never said that. Anything you hear is 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 not real, okay? It's just the kids participating in information warfare to try to get some 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 juicy gossip out of Steve. Have you ever seen him skate? Yeah. Get the hater. Yeah. yeah? He's got the most famous uh, yeah. Hello, Bozo. Bro. Man, fuck you, Steve. It is flattering to know that that Steve went to my profile and checked my clips though. Yeah. Who the fuck Give the hater? Give the hater style. Get the hater's out of the word, bro. He's terrible. You don't even make the best Sean Malto. He was? That's what makes like, him. Like, I don't see you doing the switch trades. I don't see you doing anything. Yeah, you do. I know you're you're lurking my page, getting on your your burner account. Mm, gifted hater clips mid. You know there's, a, there's a valuable uh, life lesson. Okay. okay. So, when someone gets to the point where the only effect on the world that they can make is hating people, it tells you one thing. It tells you that they tried really hard to make effects in other parts of life. Say maybe they're skating. One love. One love. Or whatever. One love. How are you doing? Uh, okay, you? Have to 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 hate. Hate. Scientologist mumbo jumbo. I haven't even tried to do anything with my life yet. I just started making YouTube videos and it worked. <laughs> it's not like I, I, I got into acting and, and made my own movie and, and tried to set myself up as some sort of Hollywood figure and then, and then flunked out of it. I lost this battle, I accept that, but we will kiss.
talk about it. It's actually kind of sad. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's actually quite sad when you think about it. Gifted hater. He's getting online. He's saying that Scapegoat's not that good. We all know that Scapegoat is actually incredibly good. He's incredibly talented. He has the best sponsors. That's why he's running Instagram Premium. I'm not paying him enough money. Oh, well, you got failed it. at everything else. Mm. So the only thing you could do yeah, you got is it. try to wreck other people's lives. Come on, Steve. Wreck other people's lives? Am I really wrecking Ryan DeSenzo's life by saying that he has he does too many front 180s? I say, Steve and I, we bury the hatchet right now. Um, we're both YouTubers. We're in the same profession. I would expect you to have a little more, bit more compassion for me. You're, you're kind of sounding like a little bit of a hater right now, if I'm going to be honest. We potentially have a mutually beneficial relationship. Um, the problem is... Only I'm the only one who's benefiting from it right now. You don't benefit from me at all. I can tell. I just bother you. So the way I've been using you, Steve, it's, I think it's time you start using me right back. So Battle of the Barracks 13, it's all getting figured out and planned right now. Let's be serious. You know me. I know you. I'm a proper skateboarding influencer uh, at this point. Here's what I propose. You put me in Battle at the Barracks, and I suck, right? I've got the worst style. I'm a failure. I can't skate. So this this can only work out well for you. You've seen my clips. I'll lose in the first round. I look like an asshole, and you look like a fucking boss. What do you have to lose? Unless you're scared. You're not scared, are you, Steve? You can put me in against the former champion, Jamie Griffin, um, and I'll, I'll try my best. I promise I won't kick him in the ankles or, or throw rocks under his board or do anything um, that would compromise the flawless reputation and integrity of Battle of the Barracks. I won't employ any cheating tactics whatsoever. And even if I tried, I'm sure that your uh, astute refereeing uh, staff would immediately pick up on all my little tricks. Come on, man. Just fucking put me in. But we will kiss. Um, all right. It seems like such a common theme in skateboarding right now that all these like ex pros who get a bit of money together turn themselves into this marketing machine uh, that sells crap. Outstanding cheese balls. If you look at what his Instagram page has turned into, and it is just this like color coordinated shrine to himself. Rob Deerdick shares this story, which isn't exactly new, but it's very funny. It's very revealing uh, into his current mindset. I would drive like a Ferrari to Fantastic Sam's. So you right off the bat, try to make yourself interesting uh, as a rich guy. When they talk about themselves and they want to be entertaining, they have to set up some quirky thing that they did with their money. I'd drive a fucking Ferrari to Fantastic Sam's. Meanwhile, look at this one. I eat the same exact meal seven times a week. Fucking why? If I had as much money as Rob Deerdick, I would never eat the same thing twice. I eat the same meal seven times a week. That's what people with no fucking money do. What's the point? I would drive like a Ferrari to Fantastic Sam's and then I would pay for everybody's haircut so I could cut the line uh, mm. so that I could get a haircut. That's how I would roll. You know what I mean? Because I figured, like, man, I'm in a hurry here. Everybody uh, here would also uh, love to have their haircut paid for. You know, it's like 20 bucks a piece. Maybe it cost me $100 to mm. jump the line. It's just one more thing I never have to think about or add mind share mm. or add any chaos to my existence ever again. Mind share. I like how it says to suck behind him. Yes, you are doing an excellent job, Rob, of telling everybody how to suck. So he goes to like a budget hair cutting place, then fucking woo, flexes on everybody and says, I'll pay for your haircut as long as I can step on you and cut you in line. Sound like a deal? So I'll create a nice little audience for myself and you guys can all watch me get my shitty ass Rob Deerdick haircut and then I'll dip out in my Ferrari and you guys get your haircut paid for. It's a fucking win-win, right? Here, I've got a couple of different ideas for, for Rob Deerdick. Idea number one. Holy shit. 
This is Rob Deerdick here. I'd like to reserve a spot at 4.30. Is that possible? Sure thing. Come in at 4.30. We'll be ready for you. Here's another thing to consider, dude. Go to a proper salon. You're going to Fantastic Sam's and spending $120 on a fucking haircut. Compared to the greats, Rob is like sort of an amateur um, in the world of, of, of finances, you know? If you look at, you look at the all-stars, Jeff Bezos just goes and gets that shit lasered right off. A real financial guru has no hair. I got a good one for you guys. This is like a dream story, you know? The last thing I had that was kind of on this level, the heist, the guy who who cut a hole in through the top of the skate shop and just like fucking rappelled down and, and stole some Powell boards. This is on that level. This kid, I guess, is getting some stuff from Bones Wheels. He, is he wearing Karyumas? <laughs> Oh, he is. Okay. Bones and Karyuma. All right. Got it. Okay. So this guy is crushing. Okay. Anyway, this kid is getting some product from Bones. He, he committed the cardinal sin. He skates for Bones and he posted himself in a Spitfire shirt. Dude, come on. Everybody fucking knows you can't do that. The Bones Wheels account sh shares a screenshot of him skating with the fucking... The enemy's emblem on, on the back of his shirt. Oh my god, look at these emojis. There's like, I think there's like five to ten emojis that should be used under no circumstances. And and this uh, Karyuma Bones kid, he employs them all. Got the praying emoji, the clapping emoji, the fist emoji, the flex emoji! I'm sorry about the tea. My bad! I got the wheels and bearings. I kind of just threw whatever blue shirt I had to to match my outfit. Dude, that's no fucking excuse. Turn it inside out. I'm literally wearing a Spitfire shirt right now, and it's inside out. See that? And then he says, starting to get a little nervous, you can tell, because he says, I can delete it, if any. I'm sorry. What? How does the clapping emoji... That doesn't even make sense within the sentence's context. I can delete it. I'm sorry. You're clapping for yourself for apologizing? I... I don't, I don't get this one at all. It's no worries if any. <clears throat> this is bizarre. This is uh, this is how it's like skate sponsored skateboarders communicate. Ryan Desenzo left a, a comment on my page the other day, and he he was dropping mad emojis. It's like sign language um, with with your text. Anyway, this poor kid, he's obviously nervous, pissing his pants directly into his Karyuma shoes. And then off the top rope, the guy who runs this Bones Wheels account is is coming in with no fucking mercy. You might want to retire this shirt forever if you want to grow here. Ah, yes. Lots of uh, room for, for growth at the Bones, uh, Bones HQ. When I tell you I'm stoked on you, I'm watching what you're doing. I need your help in promoting Bones Wheels in El Paso. This is a small life learning lesson for you. Yeah, one day, if you want to grow up to become big and strong like me, you can get a job at Bones Wheels. Most of the time, you don't get a second chance. AKA, I see you in another Spitfire shirt, and I'm putting a bullet between your eyeballs. <laughs> Send me a video of you burning that shirt in a safe place, of course. We have the Bones lawyer breathing down his neck as he's typing this out. And I'll send you three shirts to replace it. Time to take this promoting life seriously. We good? Would you guys take that, um, trade offer? <laughs> This is crazy that an adult is asking him to burn a Spitfire shirt. I always wondered how, how Bones kind of felt about being the, like, objectively inferior wheel at this point. Clearly, they're not taking it well. The kid ends up burning the fucking t-shirt <laughs> to show his undying loyalty to the, uh, the Bones Wheels gang. Wasn't that a great story, guys? I'm so fucking shout out to Bones Wheels for, for cranking out some good content. All right, piggies, come to the trough. Get your Nija content. Come on over, everybody. You're all hungry, I know. It's been a while. Asus, uh, another computer laptop gaming ad. So everybody, let's watch the jaw work the camera. Oh, what an intro, baby. You are at like an elite status of celebrity if they can only show like one eighth of your body, like the shin down, and it's immediately identifiable who you are. This is all is required for me to go, yep, that's the jaw. Yep, that's him. It's like a wrestling uh, WWE introduction where they just 
roll up the door slowly and you just see his toes and you go, Woo, Nigel! Only thing is he's not, he's not gonna fight anybody. He's just gonna try to sell us a computer. Yeah. Yeah. This order represents a new chapter in my life. The rewarding thing is creating skateboards, creating some Sub cool homie. graphics. Oh, my boy, what, what are we cooking up today? Oh, another, another skull graphic. Praying? Mm, that's nice. That's nice. You cooking this up on the Asus Republic of Gamers machine with the RGB keyboard? Perf. What? Asus collab right here. This is maybe the first like computer skateboard collab I've ever seen. Yeah, I think that's fair to say. I don't think there's ever been a skateboarding and computer collaboration before. Great graphic. Oh, that's the uh, the Republic of Gamers symbol that's been engraved into this samurai helmet here. <laughs> this dead samurai. That is nice and macho. That's a great graphic. I'm not entirely sure what this has to do with gaming computers necessarily, like a, a, a samurai skull, but I don't fucking know. What do I know? This is actually <sighs> shockingly similar to Ryan Sheckler's new graphic that, that he's come out with since leaving Plan B, the Sandlot Times. Ah, yes. It's almost the exact same thing. What the fuck? It's literally wearing the same hat. Except instead of a Republic of Gamers right here, it says Sandlot Times. Very, very strange. I'm hyped to skate it. I fell in love with skating when I was so young. Did you fall in love with skating, Nigel? I feel like it was, it was kind of an arranged marriage. Yeah, ever since I've been a little kid, I've always been known as this kind of fearless kid who just was down to hit these big rails. Was he afraid of the rail or was he afraid of what would happen if he didn't jump onto the rail? Fearless at the park and he's also fearless in the Minecraft dungeon, baby. Oh no! Found. Unleash the legend inside. Ah! That was fucking sick. Um. I already showed you guys the uh, the Sheckler graphic. I think the Sandlot Times overall, it's quite similar to the aesthetic of Disorder as well, which is just like, you know, pretty shamelessly tasteless garbage. This even looks like the, the Disorder logo, this little cross on here. I, I used to think it was it was weird that these pros would start their own board companies when it seems like they have pretty much zero like creative vision or any even remote like original ideas to bring to skateboarding to make their board company worthwhile in in any capacity like it looks to me like Sheckler is just trying to sell skateboards for some reason even though there's like really no passion or or vision behind any of this stuff this looks like if Spitfire wanted to make a skateboard We've got their little swirly here and their little swirly here st that is a beautiful logo there oh my god look at this now that is a t-shirt baby that does not hurt my eyeballs this is gonna be me at the uh the county jail if i don't do my taxes soon i just ask that they uh they let me wear my sandlot times uh long sleeve and in, in, instead of the uh official federally issued gear so here's the theory that I was quite curious why he left Plan B, um, because Plan B was giving him a lot of creative freedom. They were letting him do whatever he want. They were even letting him do a Native American uh, graphic, which is uh, some would consider to be a little culturally insensitive. I don't blame uh, Sheckler. I don't think he. I don't think he knows any better. Dude, th these were the days, man, when Sheckler had the Volcom chain. That's when I liked him most. Now he's posing in pictures like this. Eight beautiful Caucasian Red Bull ladies, and he's shorter than all of them. Basically, take this with a grain of salt, because I found this on Slap, but it does make some sense to me. It explains why so many pros are starting their stupid soulless board brands. G Beer Me says, likely for tax purposes, much like Disorder in April. These guys' accountants look at the income from each sponsor and the board brand income doesn't make much sense versus shoe and energy drinks. Sheckler is getting a new shoe with Etnies in 2022. The entire Sandlot skate park can be a marketing expense to his Sandlot brand. 
And if he stores his Sandlot boards there for inventory, he can charge his entity a warehousing slash office fee and further offset his shoe slash energy drink income. I'm not a tax expert. I barely got through geometry in high school. Um, so this is not my area, but to my monkey brain, this, this, this makes some sense. Um, if you can, if you start your own board company and you can use it to, to dodge some taxes, then I mean, I get it. You do your own skate park, you put your logos up everywhere. You start your YouTube channel. You say, look, this is all part of my business to sell my skateboards. And then they tax less of the, the monster energy slash Red Bull check. If anybody with a brain has made it this far into the video, explain this shit because this makes this makes a ton of sense to me. It could be completely incorrect, but this makes the most sense to me. And that explains why literally even the graphics are like the same exact template because these guys are just copying each other because their accountants are all giving them the same idea. All right, final story, guys. Ah, oh, man, I love this fucking guy. Mikey Taylor, you know what he's doing now? You know what our boy Mikey Taylor's doing now? He's running for city council. Let's see what Mikey has to say. Let's keep an open mind. Uh, let's not be biased. This is an unbiased program. Um, I'm sure Mikey would make a tremendous councilman. Whoa, 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 whoa. Does this jacket look at all familiar to you guys? Any other ex-pro financial geniuses have a jacket like this? That is the same fucking jacket that Rob Dyrdek is wearing, but in green. Now you tell me that there's not something spooky happening here. These guys are involved in some sort of cult-like activity where they're required to wear this stupid bomber jacket. That can't be a coincidence. I'm telling you, there is no way. You know Mikey Taylor's a real ex-pro skateboarder because he's using that that same uh, film B-roll template that everybody else in the industry uses. Only this time, instead of for a video part, he's using it uh, to run for council. Every day after school, we would all meet at Borchard Park. That was one of the few places where we were able to skate and it actually kept a lot of us out of trouble. Mmm, it kept you out of trouble, dude? Based off this first shot of a Thousand Oaks, it seems like a pretty treacherous environment. Thank God you and your friends had, had skateboarding to keep you out of trouble. I learned about delayed gratification because skateboarding mm. took so long to land a trick that I learned what it... I know a thing or two about delayed gratification myself, Mikey. Ask my wife. I became resilient in my mm. outlook of failure. Beautiful B-roll. And even the music, it sounds just like an America video. And I started looking at the world through a very creative lens. Little did I know this would be the beginning of what- That was creative. A sideways shot of a tray flip on flat. Very creative. Hardest and most rewarding thing in my life is being a dad. Dude, how, how are you a ex-professional skateboarder and now you're the dad who's who's bringing their pedalless bike kid to the skate park. This is like a D tier park enjoyer. He's also got the the blades and the scooter. His kids are covering every single wheeled activity at the skate park besides an actual skateboard. I can't believe Mikey is bringing his kids to clog up the park like that. I'm not voting for him if he if he keeps that shit up. Nah, fuck it. I'm sold.